Hello again. I know the the mic to this webcam is crap, but, but listen to this. Yeah. Uh, found another very nice uh, <coughs> member of the B, uh, of the vinyl community here on YouTube. Uh, not really sure how to say the name, but DVD, DVD thirty, DVD or DVD. Ood. Funny. Well, anyway, he started a very nice, uh, nice thread here. Musical cherries, and it's uh, all about the first. And I thought I'll answer that uh, rather quickly. First album memorizing, and uh, the first album that I actually memorized, I knew almost every sound. And I have I've talked about this album so many times here <clears throat> because it's meant so much to me. It's when I heard this, it's like wow. Can music be like this? It's like the real wow experience. It's like somebody unplugged my ears and made and, and actually I heard music for the first time, even though I've been listening to, to music for well, since I was born. I heard this album when it was new in 1986, and it's the one I'm playing in the background. And well, those of you who know my channel know what record I'm talking about. It's Paul Simon Graceland from 1986. I'm playing it now, I haven't listened to it probably for a couple of years, but when I hear it, I, I know every little tone, every little thing on this album, what's coming. So, uh, and I have to say, even though I played this record hundreds of times, several hundreds of times, and sometimes are not very, very good record plays, it still sounds very good. No, no um, record where I can hear. So, that's the one. The first one that I wanted everyone to, uh, I know to hear. Well, to be quite honest, when I was kid, was it, when I was a kid, I didn't really have that many music interested friends. I don't know where they were. Oh, most of the people around me I found was interested in ice hockey. And those who like music, they like Twisted Sister and Duran Duran and Alpha Will and, and things that I couldn't relate to. So, but I know that I tried to talk warmly about South African music after hearing this one. I could have picked this one for the, the this uh, uh, second question too, the record I wanted everyone to hear. But uh, I tried to find lots of South African music after I heard this, but it's that was very, very, very difficult to find up in Northern Sweden, I can tell you that. But this was a, an album that I found a couple of years after Graceland. It's a uh, but you can see it's very inspired by the Graceland album. It's called Homeland, and it's a compilation of uh, black South African music. Uh, groups like Delika, Mankale Falang, uh, Boyoyo Boys, who are, that's a cool instrumental group, Elias Matubula and the Chiwani Sisters, the Umzinkulu Black River, ba uh, River Band, Mayosi, uh, Mayakata, Mayakata, Hata, Hata, the King Star Brothers. It's a very good and interesting and varied compilation uh, released on the Greensleeves Records uh, British label, but I think it originally was released on Rounder Records. Uh, and this was obviously released for the Euro European British market, but it's a good introduction to great South African music without Paul Simon taking part of it, so... And Boyoyo Boys, they played on the first uh, South African track that Paul Simon heard, uh, that would become Gumboot, so it's absolutely relevant. And uh, uh, I haven't listened to it now for a couple of years, but I really wanted others to <laughs> find uh, interest in this kind of music when I was a teenager. I, ca I can't say I was in any way successful, <laughs> but... But uh, um, uh, still, I tried. Okay, uh, first solo album that I knew was truly naughty or that I was shocked about, uh, truly shocking. I, this is not really answering this question because I've never really bothered or been shocked about music I heard. But I mean, <laughs> this record 
I heard as a child. Those in Sweden know this record quite well because this was a great number one seller when it was released in the late 70s. Folklore, Bengt Sand and uh, Finn Setterholm are worst songs, our most naughty songs, all traditional songs with lyrics that are quite filled with, uh, well, sex and, and uh, uh, some words that some may find offending. And uh, my mother played this maybe without thinking about that I was a young kid who heard and remembered what I heard. So. I, I don't remember this, I've been told this, I'm not sure if it's true or not, but I've been told this and I think it's so funny today. Uh, when I went to the kindergarten, I apparently started singing some uh, lyrics or some songs from, from this album, and probably without, I, I didn't know, I didn't understand any word of what it meant, what all these bad words meant, but I guess I gave my kindergarten teacher quite a shock <laughs> when I, as a little four or five year old, sang these uh, very, very naughty songs with quite rude words. Uh, so, uh, even though I wasn't shocked, uh, some others were. <laughs> okay, first album in uh, that I bought in different uh, formats. Well, 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 I can... Well, it's quite easy. Bought in 1986, and this was probably bought in 1990 or 1991, when I started buying CDs. Grace Lab, Paul Simon. Uh, okay, and the final one, and I'm really blushing here because, oh my god. First album to hide if VC member came by. Yeah, well, um, mm -hmm. it's this little girl here, well, uh, a re um, album that was released by a Swedish porno magazine uh, called uh, Fim back in 1973. I bought this mainly because it's such a weird album with different girls in very little clothing here on the sleeve, talking about the, the, some of these songs that were very popular in 1973 and why and why these songs in some way made them a bit horny. Oh, it's so... It's, uh, and of course, uh, it's not any original artists on this, and it's the popular Swedish pop songs of that time, and also, well, it's Ring Ring, and also some international songs like You're So Vain, Blockbuster, uh, Come come Off You, The Noise, Memories of You, The Twelfth of Never, and some Swedish songs, and <laughs> played by uh, some very, very uh, anonymous studio group orchestra, so it's not, uh, and of course it doesn't even say who's playing on this album. So, it's a fun thing to have, but I have to say that the thing I'm most ashamed of is the fact that I paid, I paid around 200, uh, no, not 200, 20, around 25 dollars for this, and of course it's not worth that, it's a real oddity, but uh, I really th wonder now what on earth what I was I thinking. <laughs> So, I, I don't think I, we would put this on uh, and, and, and listen to this if any uh, vinyl community member came by. Uh, you're always welcome uh, in my home. Thank you.